So a few examples of good practice. I don't know why that's come up like it has, but on the left-hand side there, um, Pepto United uh, Adapted Football Program. Uh, this has been going on for uh, five plus years at Pepitoi on Saturday mornings. Um, it's a group of volunteers that run it, but it's uh, closely associated with the club as well. They get a kit just like they, um, like Rob will talk to um, with their program. Uh, has no NSO in, um, in, um, involvement as well. Uh, they've just done off the back of seeing a need. Uh, they get anywhere between five and 15 young people every Saturday morning. Uh, it's a great program. It's a little community. Um, there's there's uh, pathways in and out. We've had some young people that have gone on to, to play for the club and uh, other uh, grades as well, which is really cool. Uh, there's the Ellerslie Golf Program. Um, that's actually run by uh, Golf New Zealand, uh, who've recently put out a uh, disability action plan. Um, in association with some of the uh, local clubs and uh, trainees um, that are within Auckland, uh, within within the PGA, uh, which is really cool because it's growing the confidence and knowledge and understanding of the, the coaches as they are going through this program as well. Um, then you've got TriStar Gymnastics. Um, this is probably the most in, uh, ingrained um, disability program in Auckland, I'd say. Um, but it provides opportunities. You've got one uh, ratios of one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, one to four, and then one-on-one -on -one within a group session. Um, it's sustainable, it's embedded, uh, it's part of the club's fabric. Um, the, the young people can progress at a level which is suitable to them and it's, it's a, an amazing program. And then on the far side, um, more recently, Vertical Adventures partnered up with uh, Parafit Auckland uh, to create the prog uh, climbing program and uh, yeah they, they've been they have deliverers who are school-age students uh, so they're the coaches or the instructors um, this kind of led from a training that I did with and conversations I had with uh, Sport Waitakere and then also um, the the club did a training session there and then Parafit got in touch and uh, they did the, uh, ran the program so all have pathways in and out um, most important, this uh, it creates choice. A few quick things to consider. Um, if you're considering a program or opportunities uh, for participants, participants with disabilities, think about the following. Uh, what type of program you want to develop? Um, is it program specifically or exclusively for participants with disabilities? Um, is it a program where participants with disabilities have the opportunity to join non-disabled peers so they could just go and play football with or in a, in a the age appropriate grade uh, have you made provisions for that um, who are your target um, disability participants will be uh, are they going to be physical hearing visual uh, intellectual disability or pan disability um, when i'm looking at pan disability it's uh, disability in general uh, there's positives and negatives um, for all of those um, in certain situations. So just be conscious to understand that one uh, setting might not be appropriate for others, age appropriate levels. Um, some families with children with physical impairments might not want to associate with intellectual and vice versa. It's all about that balance and understanding the community that you're working within as well. Um, and then who are you going to connect with to develop your program? Uh, internal knowledge, so your coaches, your program developers, capabilities and how will you fund it? Um, there's the likes of us uh, at Halberg, uh, Special Olympics, Parafit Auckland, Blind Sport New Zealand, and uh, you've got an awesome RST that's able to rally around you and bring those organisations together and look at those funding opportunities as well through Tu Manua or um, a bit more wider, might be through Active as well. Um, so yeah, there's many, uh, many things that we personally as, at Halberg can do. Um, reach out to us and we, if it's not appropriate for us, we'll move on to another organisation, um, but we can deliver trainings to coaches, uh, discuss program development ideas, uh, link with participants, um, and you yeah, just work collectively with these organisations as well. Um, were all those programs suitable for people that have intellectual disabilities? Um, so predominantly the first one, so if you're looking at uh, the football, uh, that's predominantly for physical impairments. Uh, the gymnastics is, yep, Definitely, where they have majority, I think they have up to 60 young people with intellectual impairments at TriStar Gymnastics per term. Um, and they, 
yeah, like I said, there's there's multitude of options there as well. Uh, the golf, yes, it is um, open to any disabilities as well. Um, and then vertical adventures, I believe that uh, Parafit Auckland have opened it up to uh, physical and intellectual as well. So yeah, good question. Um, and there will be some programs around that um, that are specifically for either intellectual or uh, physical, or might be even visual impairments. Um, but it's yeah, worth worth reaching out and ha having those conversations as well. James, I think that was really valuable in sharing the work that um, Halberg does in the disability space, and I guess a bit of a starting point um, for clubs where they can kind of begin. Yeah, all um, all of us, well, four four organisations plus uh, the RSTs and uh, are all here to assist uh, your clubs, organisations to pursue these opportunities. Um, we it is a complicated space, um, but if you get in touch with uh, any of our organisations, we'll do our, our best to assist you along that pathway. Everyone's at different parts on this journey. Um, but if we can create uh, more opportunities for our young people uh, and more quality opportunities where they want to keep coming back, um, as to what Rob will probably talk to here with uh, cricket, um, it benefits the, the club, but also the wider community.